Welcome to Trino Apple Talk. Thanks for joining us. My name is Yati. I'm a software engineer from data platform team at Apple. Uh, I'm Vinita on the um, data platform team at Apple, focusing on interactive analytics. Uh, our journey of Trino Apple started a couple of years ago, and uh, Trino is deployed at scale in Apple, and we continues to see tremendous adoption across multiple teams at Apple. Uh, today's uh, agenda, uh, um, this talk is structured into two sections. In the first half, we'll talk about the use cases and uh, uh, how Trino is deployed at Apple. In the second half, we talk about the, some of the Trino features we have in-house and some of the challenges and our OSS roadmap. Before we jump onto the use cases, uh, here is an overview of our data platform. Uh, we have in mem in um, in-house meta store for data governance, and our high-performance data lake is powered by Apache Iceberg. We use Spark and Flink for data processing and ETLs, and we use Apache Airflow for uh, scheduling of jobs and uh, workloads, and Trino and use Druid uses for uh, ad hoc analytics and powering our dashboards. Our uh, data teams and business analysts use. Uh, BI tools, uh, various BI tools, and uh, notebooks for interacting with our data platform. Let's talk about the use cases. So we have broadly four categories of use cases at Apple. Uh, teams use uh, Trino for ad hoc analytics and interactive analytics. And few teams use for uh, reporting and dashboarding. Uh, some teams use uh, uh, Trino as an experimentation platform to evaluate their product changes. and. Uh, uh, last use case is like a query federation. Uh, users want to read data from multiple data sources in a single query. Uh, let's talk about how we deploy Trino at Apple. Our main goal is to provide a um, uh, self-service console uh, and a easy to provision a cluster. Uh, And uh, users should be able to, uh, data scientists should be able to bring, uh, do, get it insights into their data without having to worry about uh, underlying infrastructure and uh, tuning the underlying platforms. Uh, here is an uh, overview of our uh, uh, Trino as a service architecture. We have um, three main components one is the Trino orchestrator, and the Trino operator, and Trino itself. Let's talk about Trino operator. Uh, a Kubernetes operator uh, manages the lifecycle of uh, Trino clusters for us. Uh, we have an in-house Trino operator, a Kubernetes operator for Trino. What it includes is a uh, Kubernetes custom resource definition, which simplifies the, the Trino deployment for us. It also supports uh, custom images for uh, deploying Trino clusters. It also supports, uh, we can define custom plugins and the configuration for the custom plugins. Uh, users can add additional dependencies for existing plugins to the CRD. Uh, operator also supports uh, retrieving and storing secrets in a secure way. Uh, so operator takes care of uh, natively deploying uh, Trino coordinator and worker. Uh, now, let's talk about the Trino orchestrator. Our orchestrator is a web-based uh, console for um, managing end-to-end lifecycle of the Trino cluster, including auto, scale, auto and uh, manual scaling of Trino clusters. Uh, it simplifies the configuration for Trino, uh, Trino configurations for the users. Uh, security is enabled by default, so it takes care of uh, ACLs for cluster management, and uh, authentication and authorization for the Trino clusters. Uh, ACLs for network is also taken care of. Our dashboards are integrated with uh, logging and telemetry systems. Users should be able to uh, get the real-time logs and uh, uh, metrics of the Trino server. Uh, we uh, how it works is like a user bring their Kubernetes cluster either running on uh, on prime or cloud 
of Kubernetes. Uh, they prepare their configurations. Uh, they select their catalogs. They specify any secrets that they have. And uh, they can include any custom plugins if they have it. And uh, submit a request to Trino Orchestrator. And Trino Orchestrator uh, generates a Kubernetes YAML for the deployment and invokes a Kubernetes API server. And uh, Kubernetes API server, um, Trino operator uh, watching for the events will reconcile the request, generates a native deployment plan for uh, coordinate and worker. Once uh, users can have check the status of the cluster, uh, either through the UI or through the APIs, once the cluster is ready, they can start using it. Uh, some tidbits about our uh, Trino deployment. We try to keep up with the open source on releases. We do frequent upgrades uh, for Trino versions. Uh, we have various connectors at uh, Apple. The most popular connectors are Iceberg, Hive, and Cassandra. And the most popular file format we have uh, at Apple are Parquet and ORC. And we pursue our effort to improve the read performance of Parquet readers in Trino. Uh, now, Vinta will talk about the, some of the Trino features we have in house and uh, OSS roadmap and some of our challenges. Over to you. Thanks, Yati. Um, let me begin with the features that we have internally. Since early this year, we are able to contribute upstream, and we intend to contribute back as much as possible. Here are some of the features in the general category that is not any connector specific. We have auto-scaling for Trino clusters based on load and gracefully shut down the workers when the load drops below a specified threshold. This can have uh, potentially significant cost savings. And uh, currently, um, we leverage Kubernetes horizontal pod auto-scaling for this, and we intend to um, leverage custom Trino metrics in the future. Our Trino clusters have multiple authentication types, uh, like JWT and OAuth and more. Um, one of the challenges with OAuth is that uh, external tools like Tableau don't support um, OAuth authentication yet. Um, we've also added support for multi-value multi audience claims uh, in JWT tokens, and that has been pushed upstream. Um, we have an in-house event listener that we use to generate insights and dashboards for our users. This provides them insights into questions like, you know, which data sets are being queried the most, uh, who's querying it, uh, to be able to understand uh, the resource utilization, bottlenecks, and attribute costs. And the custom event listener is also compatible with newer versions of Trino uh, if there are any changes in the event objects. Uh, in this slide, we'll go over some of the features that we have added in-house for the Iceberg and Hive connectors. Um, we have an in-house metadata, uh, metadata system that is also provided as a service. And this system acts as a metastore uh, for the Trino clusters. Um, and uh, this custom metadata, metadata system provides access control to all types of metadata. And we have integrated uh, this with Trino, so users are able to uh, manage their ACLs in a central place, regardless of which query engine they're using. Um, and one of the changes required here is to allow impersonation of um, all uh, Metastore calls. And previously, that was only limited to a couple of them. Um, next is uh, encryption. So if your data contains uh, personal identifiable information, then you will want to encrypt your data. And third-party clouds like uh, AWS and GCP uh, for instance, support server-side encryption, but it has the following disadvantages. Like moving files between systems requires you to uh, decrypt and re-encrypt the data again. Uh, you may not have support for column-level encryption, and in some clouds, you may not have control over the uh, keys themselves. So uh, Parquet files containing sensitive information uh, can be protected by the modular encryption uh, mechanism that encrypts and authenticates the file data and metadata. 
while still allowing for regular uh, parquet functionality like um, columnar projection, predicate pushdown, um, compression, and, and things like that. Um, and Parquet modular encryption is basically an encryption mechanism that is embedded into the uh, Parquet format itself. Um, so we've added read support for um, PME uh, uh, iceberg and hype tables, and we intend to look into write support soon as well. We also have uh, integration with our object store that is the ability to read from and write to this object store. Um, so although we continue to uh, support both the Hive and Iceberg connectors, Iceberg connector will continue to be our major area of uh, focus for development. Um, here are some additional changes that we've uh, added to the Iceberg connector in addition to the ones that we just discussed. So uh, we've seen scenarios um, where if the thrift metastore uh, lock operation fails due to no such lock exception, that causes a table to get into a, a unusable state, which is pretty bad. And we uh, pushed a fix for this upstream. And this is one of the cases where this was already fixed in the uh, Hive table operations in the Iceberg library, but uh, Trino couldn't leverage it since Trino doesn't use Iceberg's table operations. Um, we've also added support for the dollar path uh, hidden column and iceberg connector, and uh, combined with the change that allows us to filter splits based on the dollar path predicates, this has been tremendously useful for debugging. Uh, we've added support for specifying sort order during table creation and the ability to alter a table sort order uh, later as well. And currently, the sort order is not um, used by Trino for writes, but uh, and we plan to look at. We plan to look into that soon, um, um, but in its current state, it is still useful for our users because uh, they don't want to. Uh, they find Trino much more quick and convenient to use, and otherwise, they would have to uh, spin up Spark jobs just for the lack of this functionality in Trino. Um, on a similar note, there are currently only a couple of um, iceberg table properties that are supported by Trino, and we've added the ability to alter all iceberg table properties and, uh, in Trino, as well as set them as Metastore properties. And uh, this is useful if you have uh, table management services that can read, read these Metastore properties and act upon them for use cases such as auto-compaction. We've also added a metadata table to fetch the metadata JSON uh, for iceberg tables, and uh, this is useful per, for PAR or admin users who would like an easy way to uh, kind of look at the metadata JSON file uh, and provide insights into an iceberg table, or, or for any systems that provide insights into an iceberg table, like you know you want to show your users uh, how the table schema evolved, partitions evolved, sort orders, and so on. So now um, I'll go over some of our major challenges. Uh, the first is interoperability with uh, other compute engines. Uh, for instance, views uh, created in Trino cannot be read from Spark, and Spark views can be read from Trino, but uh, with a lot of caveats. Um, and there are also some teams who are looking to use the uh, Apache data sketches that are available in Druid from Trino. Um, the next, uh, I think we touched upon this a bit earlier. Um, although we've added support for um, altering iceberg table properties, it would really make the most sense if Trino respects these um, iceberg table properties as well. And our users have that expectation. Um, in, our, in, in our past discussions with the community, there were concerns that um, iceberg table properties may not be um, uh, may have some properties that are uh, specific to certain compute engines, and uh, there may be some properties that may not are not generic enough or directly applicable to Trino. Um, so perhaps if this can be addressed in the Iceberg library itself that makes properties generic or applicable enough to all compute engines, then we could make the change in Trino to support all Iceberg table properties as well. Um, so next is uh, zero downtime of Trino clusters for config changes or upgrades, uh, as well as flexible routing of queries when you have multiple Trino cluster is also another challenge that we are currently tackling. 
Um, some users have also requested for the ability to add catalogs dynamically, and it's good to hear from uh, Martin that uh, Trino community is looking into uh, adding the support as well. Um, so we've seen cases where we need to fix issues that were already addressed in the Iceberg uh, library since some of the Iceberg classes are re-implemented in Trino or replaced with Trino-specific versions. And uh, this is true for both uh, regular uh, tables as well as metadata tables. Uh, the last but not the least, um, Trino currently doesn't have the ability to plug in um, custom optimizer rules or operators. Uh, similar to Spark's uh, extensions API. And one of the reasons that uh, one might want to have this uh, capability is for performance. Um, next, I'll go over our open source uh, roadmap and the areas we would like to contribute to and collaborate with the community on. So as discussed in the challenges, we would like to leverage um, Iceberg APIs as much as possible so we get all the benefits from the developments uh, in the Iceberg community as well. Uh, to this effect, we would like to integrate with the REST catalog in Iceberg. Um, currently, there's limited support for pushing down um, non-identity partitions or partition transforms. Um, uh, in, in Trino Iceberg Connector, and for instance, bucket transforms are not supported, and I think we have support for date transforms, but only at the partition boundaries, which is very, res which is very restrictive. And this also trips uh, quite a few of our users, uh, since uh, other compute engines like Spark do support this functionality. Our users have uh, expressed uh, interest and support for bucketed joints for iceberg tables in Trino, especially since the support for storage partition joints was added in Spark last year. We also uh, plan to look into supporting simple aggregation pushdown in the iceberg connector, um, like count to begin with, and perhaps extend to uh, min, max, um, met, min, man, min and max, where uh, metrics can actually be tr uh, trusted. That is, you know, you don't have truncation of stats. Um, so there's also, uh, we've seen cases where the CBO in uh, Iceberg Connector uh, doesn't work as uh, expected, and uh, we are closely tracking the OSS work for leveraging uh, Puffin files for stats calculation and would be willing to contribute here as well. So uh, to address the view compatibility problem that I spoke about earlier, we would like to look into support for uh, iceberg native views in Trino, uh, as well as in Spark. And there have been proposals in the community about how to support both the views in uh, Trino, uh, Trino iceberg connector that exists today and the Trino native uh, views, and we hope to contribute uh, here. So ETL is another uh, big thing. We know it's coming our way, um, and uh, we are looking to leverage the features from the Tardigate project, the fault tolerant execution. And we would also like to add support for um, uh, sorted writes as well as uh, scaling writers for partition writes. So with regards to perf improvements, we would like to leverage Iceberg's uh, Parquet uh, to Arrow read path. And this requires us to represent uh, a page in Trino based on Arrow. And uh, it would be great if Trino also supports um, Arrow as its in-memory representation. Um, the motivation and goals for this project are somewhat similar to that of the Hummingbird project, and we hope to discuss further and collaborate with the community on this common goal. Um, last, caching. Uh, we're currently experimenting with data caching uh, in SSD as well as in memory, and we would like to follow up uh, with uh, other layers of cache like metadata caching and result set caching as well. So if any of this sounds interesting to you, uh, do join us. We are hiring. Thank you. And we are open for questions. Hi. Um, good question. The, the metadata table that you mentioned uh, is that just for the, the read-only purposes, or can you also like 
edit or update uh, data into the metadata JSON files? Uh, it's currently only for read-only purpose. Uh, I think this is a simple question. I'm just wondering who your users are primarily. Is it like data science? Is it is it internal facing applications, external facing applications? I think we have a wide variety of uh, users. Uh, yeah, I think everybody, whatever you mentioned, right? Like data analysts, scientists, internal. Uh, yeah. For your uh, Kubernetes auto scaling, how do you handle cordoning off workers before scaling them down, assuming that there's still some activity on those workers? Um, so we uh, we wait until all the queries that are running on the workers actually complete, uh, and only then we kind of decommission a worker. Do you cordon off the coordinator also to to do that, or is there another approach that I'm not uh, considering? Well, okay. do, do you do you prevent uh, queries from accessing the coordinator node also, um, and so like just shut down the whole cluster? We don't uh, touch the coordinator. We ensure that the coordinator is always up and running. Yeah. So you mentioned zero downtime was kind of your focus uh, for your system. And that's also kind of our focus. So, but I wonder what's your biggest challenge about zero downtime? So, was there like errors or transient issues, or you're just talking about deployments? Uh, yeah, I think uh, to to address uh, there there are two categories. One is uh, clusters where you have to kind of do upgrades and regular maintenance and push changes. Uh, another is uh, perhaps some of your uh, Clusters are getting too large, and you want to go and like maybe split those clusters into like uh, multiple smaller clusters, right? And uh, how do you take care of kind of routing these queries to the appropriate cluster and so on? So the the the, the thing that we've seen with larger clusters is that you know workers go bad, coordinator. There's a lot of coordinator restarts and things like that. So uh, 